What's up guys, it's Talha here. In this video, we are going to be modeling a simple interior in Revit and then render that in Enscape. Before I get started, I would like to ask you to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to turn on the post notifications and don't forget to check out my interior course. You can follow the first link in the description. Now let's get started. So here I am in Revit and as usual I am going to be using the architectural template. Now first let's select wall here and then edit type, duplicate. We want to create a new 6 inch wall. So let's rename this to 6 inches and then click OK and then edit. And here in the thickness we can put 6 inches and click at the corner to open the material browser and then create a new material let's rename this 001 walls and then click use render appearance and then here let's open up the asset browser and go to appearance library and then wall paint matte and just look for the material you want let's use this one flat antique white load this in and in the finish we will change from matte to semi gloss now click ok now we can change the height here 12 feet enter now we are ready to draw the walls so let's draw from here 14 feet by 14 and then just hit escape and draw from here because we want these three walls to be higher than the other walls of this house now hit escape again and change the height of this to 10 feet and let's draw uh, the new walls from here maybe 11 feet and then we we can just align that to this wall and create a 5 feet more on this side then we will put 11 for the for the room here now we can just join that here and then cancel and select the wall again and create similar and draw from here seven feet maybe let's join that to this wall so once we are done with this we can now create the floor so select floor then edit type we will create a new six inch floor as well so change the name first generic six inches ok and then in the thickness here put 6 inches and let's change the material create a new one for the floor as well rename that to 002 floor the reason why we are adding these numbers is only to take our materials to the top of this list here so if I click outside you can see both of our materials can be found on the top of this list anyway now just click use render appearance and go to appearance we are going to be using our own texture image for this so click on image here and you can see I have separated some textures here let's use this one flooring and then change the scale of this to 4 feet maybe and then to add the bump you can just click on this checkbox here and it will open up this dialog select, select the bump material open then we can put four feet here also you need to put the same as the main material now click ok and increase the amount to 100 maybe we will do the other changes to the material uh, when we are uh, rendering this in an escape maybe we need to edit the glossiness as well as the reflectivity so we will do that when we are using an escape for now let's just click ok and then just draw the floor around these walls okay once we created the okay once we created the sketch we can click finish and let's see that in 3d let's zoom in 
okay we need to change the visual style to wireframe so we can see the material if it's okay or not so we need to increase the size of this of this texture as well as we need to rotate this so let's go to manage materials and as you can see the this material is already selected so we can just go to appearance and then click on image increase the size to six feet and in the rotation we can put 90 degrees let's put 90 then click done and we need to repeat the same with the bump material as well so click on this bump image and then make it six feet and change the rotation to 90 okay <coughs> So it's perfect now. Let's create the base molding. To create the base molding, we need to create a new profile first. So let's go to file here and then new family. Here look for the profile template. Here we have that. Let's open this up. And now let's draw the profile. So select line and then select rectangle and just draw a rectangle here maybe we'll just make it four inches and the thickness uh, let's try one inch and we need to create the arc here so go back to create again select line and we, we will use fillet arc to do that here we have fillet arc select that and just click on this line and then this one and we can now create the arc so once we are finished with this we can save this file so file save as family let's call it base molding save then load into project now to create the to to add this base molding to this we need to select the wall and then edit type edit again and here you have the options to add the sweep to this wall but you can see we cannot actually use these buttons now to enable these buttons we need to click preview here and then change the view from floor plan to section now you can see this we can uh, we can use this button so click on sweeps here and then click add and now we need to select the profile which we have just created click on this drop down and select base molding and then in the material i'm going to be using the same materials as the walls but we will make that uh, darker so first let's create the duplicate and then okay we can actually rename this here it's 003 base molding and then go to appearance and first here you need to click on this uh, duplicate this asset button otherwise it will affect on the main material as well so once you click on this you can just go here and click on this color here and we can take this slider down here you will see the difference here in the new material maybe let's try this and then in the side here you need to change from exterior to interior because we want this molding to be inside now click OK and you can see the molding is now created here we can just click OK OK again so we have created the base molding but on this side uh, this wall you can see it's actually outside of this so we can select this wall and just hit space bar once to flip this wall and it's perfect now to add the doors we need to go back to level 1 and then architecture select door so I'm going to select this one then edit so we can uh, apply a new material to this create a new one again for the doors rename to 04 doors then use render appearance and open up the asset browser go to appearance library 
I am going to be using a plastic material for the doors so maybe let's use this one ABS white now here we can just copy this material name and just paste that in the frame material as well click OK and let's place a door on this side here this hit space bar add one on this side now we can create the ceiling so to create the ceiling we need to go to the ceiling plans level one and select ceiling from here then edit first let's uh, delete this one and in the thickness let's put two inches and then the material we will use the same as the walls material so let's select that and then uh, we can now draw our ceiling here so we will use sketch ceiling we will not use this automatic ceiling option because uh, because we want to give a different height on this side so select ceiling and draw a rectangle only on this part here and let's change the height offset of that 11 feet maybe then we can click finish but you can see the ceiling is not visible here the reason why it happened like this is because the view range is below the ceiling so we need to edit the view range or we can create a new view range for this uh, only for this part so let's go to view and here in the plan views I click on this drop down and select plan region select rectangle and draw a rectangle only on this side because we want a different view range on this area now let's edit the view range first change the top to unlimited as well as the view depth then we can just uh, edit the cut plane here so the height of the ceiling is 11 so we'll put 11 here then ok finish that and there you go we can now see the ceiling here but this part is not visible here actually because the view range is also touching these walls so we can just take that we can just uh, use these handles and take the view range here now let's hide this because we don't want to see these dashed lines so right click hide in view elements hide in view elements now let's create another ceiling on this side so go back to architecture select ceiling then sketch ceiling draw the sketch for the ceiling for this one we want it to be at 9 feet height then finish again go to 3d and you can see the ceiling is now created but there is a gap here so to fill this gap we need to create a wall here first let's see the size of this gap so go to the south elevation select the dimension and let's see that it's actually two feet so we need to create a two feet wall on on level two so let's go to level two select this wall create similar and then unconnected height just make it two feet and draw here let's see that in 3d again okay it did not fix if you remember the height of the ceiling was nine feet so it means this wall need to be one foot down from the level one so let's select that and we can just put minus one foot in the base offset and unconnected height we need to add one foot extra so it will be three feet and we fix this gap let's see from here now we are done with this as well let's create the curtain wall on this side so go back to level one select the wall and from this drop down select uh, storefront then we need to edit the spacing here so in the vertical grid change the spacing to three feet 
and horizontal we don't want any horizontal grid uh, any horizontal mullion so we can just change that to none and in the vertical mullions we want a one inch rectangular mullion one inch square for the borders 2.5 by 5 inch is okay now close this and draw a wall on this side here maybe at one foot six you leave a gap forgot to change the height of this so select the this curtain wall and then change the height to eight feet maybe perfect now if I zoom in here you can see the vertical mullions are creating this gap here so to fix that you need to select all these horizontal mullions then just go here and make it continuous repeat the same with the bottom ones also select all of these then make continuous and we have fixed that as well now let's create wall cover on this side of this wall here so we will use decal to create that let's go to level one and first we need to create a section here so we can see uh, that wall so select section and then double click on this now go to insert and click on this drop down and then decal types because first we need to insert the images here so create a new one let's call it wall cover then ok load up the image I'm going to be using this one select that open and here in the finish we need to change that to matte because we don't want this to be uh, glossy at all so just keep it matte then click OK and now let's place that here select the decal again and just click anywhere on the screen if you are in a wireframe mode you cannot place this so I will just show you if you are in a wireframe mode you can see you cannot actually place that here so you must need to be in a hidden or a shaded view here so I will select hidden line and then just click now select this decal and check this lock properties so we can stretch this freely stretch that till there and then until this wall here let's see this in realistic view it's looking very very nice so I will stop this tutorial right here in the next part I will show you how you can model wall mounted TV cabinet in Revit as well as we will place other components and do the rendering in Enscape so stay tuned for that that's it for this tutorial I hope you have learned something new so please make sure to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and don't forget to turn on the post notifications and don't forget to check out my interior course on Udemy and yeah see you guys in the next video